Hi, I'm Yashni, taking you through some of the things people are talking about and stuff they're sharing from around the world. On Newsfeed today, will a shorter work week make employees happier and more productive? We investigate. The Asian-American actress who's big in Hollywood but is failing to win over audiences in China. Returning to the motherland but keeping that precious Western passport, the celebrity seeking dual citizenship in African countries. And in Animals Doing Stuff, the giant tortoise who's had so much sex, he's managed to save his entire species from extinction. Now imagine only having to work four days a week. Sounds good, right? Well, some people think working fewer hours will actually increase productivity and make people happier in general. But will it really? Here's Estra with more. The Prime Minister of Finland, Sanna Marin, made headlines after it was reported that she wanted to introduce a four-day work week. And people online were stoked by the idea. But it turns out it was lost in translation. The government took to Twitter dismissing the reports, tracing it back to a story in August last year, where she suggested the idea. But that was months before she became the world's youngest head of government in December. But it got people thinking, could it really work? We asked productivity expert Jill Duffy, and she says flexibility is key. So a shorter work week has really been in people's minds since around the 1960s, 1970s, when we saw this increase in technology. And people started to think, you know, if we brought more technology into the workspace, more robots to do our jobs, well, surely that would free us up to have more leisure time. And of course, the opposite has happened. So we've seen corporations have um, more control over workers' time and increase the amount of time that they spend at work in order to increase profits through supposedly increasing productivity. Um, when we think about whether a shorter work week would actually benefit both employees and employer, it's really important to talk about the amount of time being put in per week and the industry itself. I think what we see is that the more increases we have in flexibility, that's really where the key is. So it's not about necessarily having a 30-hour work week or a 40-hour work week or working Monday through Friday, but it's about giving workers flexibility so that they can get their jobs done in the timeframes that work best for them. I think there are some instances where that's not really realistic. So for example, um, nurses or people in healthcare, they can't always choose their own hours, but there's some flexibility even there for people say to opt into a night shift or to opt into working the earlier schedule. So as long as the employees have some sort of choice or um, ability to advocate for themselves around what working hours work best for them, that's really gonna help a lot. In terms of a maximum number hour per hours per week, um, we know that around 60 is where people start to top off, especially in the knowledge space. So just because you're in a chair 40 hours a week doesn't mean you're being productive that whole time. When we cut a work week down and have people work, say, 35 hours a week rather than 40 hours a week, in general, we find that people are um, self-sufficient and that they know how to better manage their time in the allotted amount of time that they're given. So if you put people in a chair for 40 hours a week, they're gonna figure out the ways to get their work done and still take the breaks that they need in order to refresh. If you shorten it down to 35 hours, they're gonna do the same thing. And as a result, it might just be the case that they need fewer little breaks throughout the day. Let's have a look now at some other things that caught our eye on social media. Now it's award season in Hollywood and the nominations for the big one, the Oscars, are out. Parasite has made history by becoming the first South Korean movie to earn a Best Picture and Best Foreign Language Film nomination. Joker, though, is the one leading the pack with 11 nods. Diversity, though, is once again a problem with most actors being white and no female directors nominated. 
Now, it's tough out there for young reporters, especially if you're Sam Kachiara. The Australian journalist got hosed down while trying to do his job. The family he was trying to talk to watered down the situation quite literally. Now, what was all the fuss about? Well, young Sam was reporting on this family who've apparently been harassing their neighbours. Judging from the language they use when speaking to them, the potty mouth kids are probably guilty. Australian Twitter, though, didn't seem to have a lot of sympathy for poor Sam. They seem more concerned about the wasting of water during a drought crisis, and some didn't think the story was very good journalism at all. Shame. Poor Sam in his wetsuit. And calling all the single ladies, or married ladies too, if that's your thing, a Japanese billionaire is looking for his significant other. Some of Yusaku Maezwa's requirements include being a woman over the age of 20, sorry guys, have a bright personality and want to enjoy life to the fullest. Sounds good, right? However, there's a catch. You also have to go to the moon and back to declare your love, quite literally. The 44-year-old will be the world's first civilian passenger to be flown to the moon. Applications to be his life partner close on the 17th of January. I can think of a billion reasons to get cracking on that application. She's an award-winning actress who starred in some of Hollywood's biggest blockbusters, but Aquafina doesn't seem to have quite the same impact in some Asian countries. Here's Patrick to explain why. She's half Chinese, she's half Korean, and Aquafina is the first Asian to win a Best Actress Award at the Golden Globes. But think that helped boost the farewell at the box office in China? Well, think again. Film fans here say the movie about an Asian-American writer who returns to the country of her birth to visit her dying grandmother is set to bomb in this market. On the review site Rotten Tomatoes, 98% of viewers gave the movie a positive rating, but on China's equivalent, Douban, just 60% gave it a positive review. And Aquafina, whose real name is Nora Lum, has been criticized for her appearance, with some people on the social media site Weibo saying she looks like a fish. I can't even see a poster of the movie in this cinema. The problem, critics say, is that it was targeted at the North American market and the storyline just doesn't really resonate with people in China. And some people have said that they found the portrayal of certain aspects of Chinese culture in the movie to be offensive. But the makers of The Farewell needn't necessarily worry. The 2018 movie Crazy Rich Asians, which also featured Aquafina in a supporting role, was also a flop in China. That movie grossed more than $230 million in ticket sales worldwide, making it the highest grossing rom-com in a decade. What do Ludacris and Idris Elba have in common? Now, besides both being celebrities, they also both have dual citizenship. They're looking for a deeper connection to their African heritage, and they're not the only ones. Ladies and gentlemen, I just became an official citizen of Gabon, of Africa. I am a loyal citizen of Zamunda. I mean Gabon. <laughs>
Let's go around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Monday. She's one of Iran's most beloved athletes and the country's only woman to have won a medal at the Olympics. But now Kamia Alizadeh will no longer represent Iran. She's defected to an as yet unknown country in Europe, saying her government has been using her for propaganda. The 21-year-old Taekwondo champion says she is, quote, one of the millions of oppressed women in Iran. A man has survived more than three weeks in the Alaskan wilderness after he accidentally burned down his cabin. Tyson Steele proved he really was a man of steel by building a makeshift shelter and digging a snow cave. Temperatures plunged to minus 26 degrees Celsius. And Tyson was eventually rescued after his parents launched a search as they hadn't heard from him. Moral of the story, always call your parents, kids. Turkish Twitter was abuzz this weekend after the appearance of this young woman on the local version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Umu Gulsum Gensh is the show's first disabled contestant. Now, she's unable to talk, but communicated using a whiteboard. The 27-year-old was more successful than most contestants, walking away with 125,000 Turkish lira, which is more than $21,000. In another example of how climate change is adversely affecting the planet, Pakistan's Shispa Glacier is moving so fast that those living in the area have started panicking. It's become so bad that even the United Nations has started to intervene. During the past four months, movements of several meters were happening on a daily basis. When, when a glacier lake bursts, there is an enormous amount of uh, not only ice and rocks and water and debris uh, uh, that, that falls through, also mud and so on, and this has devastating effects. It basically destroys everything that comes you know, uh, in its way. This whole area will be devastated. People have lands, homes, trees, and there is a whole population. And if this glacier bursts, the whole population and the people's properties will go into the river. And in today's Animals Doing Stuff, the story of a tortoise who has literally done so much stuff, he managed to save an entire species from extinction. Meet Diego. This handsome chap is the most prolific procreator on Espanola, which is part of the Galapagos Islands. He may be 100 years old, but his age hasn't stopped him from fathering more than a thousand children. He was first placed on the island to help with breeding programs and he sure does play his part. When he first arrived, there were only two males and 12 females, but now the population of giant tortoises is at more than 2,000. Most of that is thanks to Diego's playboy lifestyle and rampant libido. Well, that's all from the Newsfeed team. Reach out to me with your questions, comments, complaints, and suggestions at Yash Paddy. You'll find us 24 7 on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Follow, subscribe, add. I'll see you again tomorrow.